somebody's walking towards them, they may not recognise their face because it's blurry. Shortsightedness is a classic industrial disease. And like every industrial disease, it's not simple. Okay, so come over here and take a look. So look, you can look at this screen here. But these are worldwide prevalences of myopia. It's reached epidemic proportions in Asia, but it's truly gone up significantly throughout the world. You know, so that's a serious potential public health problem. So a young baby, for example, is what we call hyperopic, which means the eyeball is actually a little bit too small for the power of the optics. And it has to grow in this coordinated way in order to get things in focus. Normally light comes in and it gets focused on these cells at the back of the eye. When the eye is too long, the light stops short of those cells. So all you can do is fiddle with where the focal position is by putting spectacles or contact lenses on the eye. And that doesn't change the fact that the eye is basically too long. It's actually grown too much. What happens when you turn the lens of a camera is you're actually making the lens further from or closer to the material that absorbs light. You can also control the muscles in your eye, the, the ciliary muscles which control your lens thickness, so you can actually adjust your lens. Uh, that happens over a very brief time scale of um, fractions of seconds to seconds. Um, so that's one way of controlling blur. You know, young children, as they're developing, they're not going to experience uh, prolonged constant blur of all one kind. If they're looking at something up close and things in the distance are blurred, or they're looking at something far away and things up close are blurred. And as you move your eyes around from one place to another, you do all kinds of different things with your eyes and experience all kinds of different visual environments. The blur will vary from one moment to another. There's a process by which eyes will grow into focus over time. And most children are born farsighted and over the first decade of life, that farsightedness diminishes. If their farsightedness diminishes too fast, that's a predictor of whether they're going to become myopic. Children are spending more time indoors studying or watching TV or whatever may be at greater risk for developing myopia. People have always thought there are two factors. One is yeah, what's called near work, so too much of that. Um, and of course, the more of that you do, the less time you have outdoors. Now, unless you read outdoors. Unless you read, well, that's not at all silly, because in as much as we know about the mechanisms, reading outdoors shouldn't be a problem. If you're reading a screen or a book, I mean, the, the optics are the same, apart from one big difference that what you're reading is emitting light. That certainly could make a difference. And how about with one? A lot of ophthalmologists tend to neglect the problem until the myopia is already very severe. But we know the higher the myopia is, the more difficult it is to prevent further progression. If it wasn't for glasses, people with myopia would be profoundly disabled. It's an epidemic which is masked in the West. We accept just because professionally we can correct it so easily. We can make it go away. Can you see? The eye is responding to what it sees. So to get that we need to understand what is actually in the image that the eye is capturing that tells it whether to grow or not to grow. The most important thing for people to know is how bad it can get which is as bad as East Asia, but we're on the verge of effective prevention. That's what people need to know.